Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be having a little wine here and building a new trading bot. So um, I have this Lyric Pinot Noir. It's from uh, Santa Barbara from 2018. Good year, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so not a, not a sponsored video or anything. I don't have the wine sponsors yet, but you know, it just happens to be what I'm drinking. So today I'm going to be talking about super trend. What is it? I don't know yet. Some people in the last video, uh, I asked, uh, what people want to see and they said super trend. So yeah, I want to see what it is. What's it about? Can we build a trading bot uh, using this? Uh, I'm just going to learn it as I go with you and share it with you. Maybe some other people are already familiar with all of this, uh, pine script down below, but I am not, um, I'm going to try to write this in Python. And I'm going to use a uh, this library called CCXT to place uh, buy and sell orders. I'll either use my Binance account or my Coinbase account to uh, buy and sell some stuff. Um, I demoed this in the last video. We showed how to uh, buy and sell. We showed how to uh, fetch some historical data. Uh, the last 15 five minute candles, for instance, uh, we showed how to uh, get some quotes um, and, and a variety of things that you can do using this library that supports connecting to multiple exchanges. I'm going to connect this to a schedule um, so that we can uh, retrieve data, you know, periodically to check for uh, new price data. And then we're going to try to uh, write the Python code to apply this uh, super trend uh, strategy here or indicator to that um, and see if we can uh, generate some buy and sell signals and trade based upon this thing. Um, like I said, um, I am unfamiliar with this and you know, I'm just going to study it and show what I do as I go. Um, you can see there's a picture of uh, pivot point here. There's a couple of versions of it. I looked it up. Uh, so it says uh, super trend. This one has super trend with EMA. Uh, this has pivot point super trend and it looks like there's a variety of like flavors of this of combining it with multiple indicators and tweaking the settings uh, certain ways uh, to pr produce a certain outcome so maybe some people have found flaws with it uh, when it's used on its own uh, but combined with other things maybe it's more powerful uh, yeah let's let's figure it out um so you see i have a picture here um obviously when you look at the picture right all these pictures look real pretty you know obviously it tells you exactly when to buy right here and then a nice uptrend starts and you sell it right at the top. You make lots of money and then you sell and then, you know, you buy again and, and you just keep making money every time. It always wins, right? Um, yeah, let's see. Is that really the case? I don't know. We're going to try it. So yeah, I'm going to try to break this down. Um, at least one version of it. This one looks a little bit uh, simpler, so I might just do this one. Uh, but one common component of super trend, if I look at it, is uh, the average two range. And it also looks like there's an ATR factor here. So some multiple um, of this ATR value. Um, so yeah, let, let's talk about that first. So um, I don't want it to be a super long hour long video. So let's just talk about uh, this piece of it first. So let's look at the ATR since it's a component of any variety of this super trend uh, indicator. So uh, if you go to Investopedia, great wealth of knowledge about everything. Uh, describes what it is, right? It's by uh, Mr. Wells Wilder, who obviously created a lot of indicators like I think ADX and RSI and a variety of these um, indicators that people use. Um, he made average true range as well. And it's described by uh, this formula here, which is either very simple looking to you, or if you didn't do a lot of math, maybe it looks really complicated, but I want to break this down and talk about what this is and uh, we'll actually get some real-time data here. So we'll look at this data coming in for a coin like Ethereum, and let's calculate the ATR on paper. You know, I do the, the iPad thing. So um, yeah, let's just write it out real quick like we're in school, make sure we understand it really well before we use some type of library to calculate this because I want to make sure I really understand the script, right? So let's talk about the ATR uh, portion first, what it is, how to calculate it. We'll do it on paper. Uh, we'll apply it to some actual data, make sure it's correct, and then we'll use a library to do it. So I'm going to try out this technical analysis library in Python, which is um, different from TALib. I've tried a variety of TA indicator libraries on here, including TALib, uh, Backtraders uh, technical analysis library, and Tulip indicators, 
and let's throw one more into the mix and figure out which one we like. This one looks kind of kind of nice, actually. It looks a little bit more Pythonic and modern than something like TA Lib. Uh, and the re yeah, so that's one reason I'm going to try this out. TA Lib, you know, some people have trouble installing it on Windows. This one might just install really cleanly and easily. Um, just as a plain uh, Python uh, package. Whereas TLib TA Lib isn't as Pythonic because you can tell it's like, I believe it's built as a wrapper around like a C library. So um, this seems like it's written from scratch and pure Python. Maybe we won't have all these issues where we have to like compile it and install it in weird ways. We can just use a regular uh, pip install. Um, so yeah, some people might like uh, this version and it also has a nice, you know, set of classes here. Like while it's, it's divided into uh, multiple uh, classes here. So there's volatility, momentum, volume, and trend indicators. So under volatility indicators, right? You see it has average true range built in already. And so uh, we're gonna understand it first from scratch, and then we'll just show how to use uh, this technical analysis library in Python to, uh, to do it. Um, and then once you're comfortable with this, then you can tweak and use other parts of this library if you want. So perhaps you wanna combine volatility with, with something else, right? With a trend, volatility with trend or something like that or volume. Um, so yeah, let's talk about how to use this library. And then once we know how to use this library, uh, we can uh, use a schedule to pull in data from one of these exchanges. And, and then from that data, we should be able to apply a strategy using uh, this library and our understanding of this algorithm. And then based on that, we'll be able to uh, detect uh, buy and sell signals and trigger those. And at that point, we'll uh, fire the Python code from CCXT, the cryptocurrency exchange trading library that we discussed uh, in the last video. And we'll use that to create uh, buy and sell orders on Binance or Coinbase or whatever crypto exchange you use. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with talking about average true range. So ATR or average true range, it is a measure of market volatility. So um, whatever we're trading, whether it's a stock or a cryptocurrency or the lean hogs or whatever it is you trade, uh, how much, how volatile is that instrument? How much is the price uh, moving around? Is it rapidly going up and down? Can it fall 20% of the day, 30% of the day? You know, Bitcoin's pretty volatile. Or, you know, does it not move around very much? Like AT&T stock uh, is still about the same price it was 20 years ago. So it's not going to gap up, you know, 60% or something in a day. It's not very volatile. So a lot of momentum and growth stocks are very volatile. As you've seen over the past month or so, right in February, you saw... Uh, those growth stocks move very fast, move down just as fast as they moved up. So uh, how do we measure this volatility? One tool we can use is the average true range. Um, a lot of people use this ATR. If you watch the uh, full stack trading app tutorial, there was a point where we set a trailing stop. It's very common to use uh, this indicator ATR to help you set a trailing stop. So if you're trading this a super volatile stock or cryptocurrency that moves around a lot, right? If you try to set some super tight stop on a volatile stock like that, then you're gonna get stopped out like super easily, right? Uh, if you set it like 1% behind, but it's a stock that goes up or down a few percent uh, on any given day. So some people use this uh, average true range to measure how volatile a stock is and use some multiple like 1.5 ATR, twice the ATR to determine, uh, you know, to move the stop a little bit further out to allow for its uh, the instrument's normal volatility, okay? So how do you calculate this? So uh, first you use the true range indicator and then you take the average of that, right? And so the true range here is taken as the greatest of the following. The current high minus the current low, the absolute value of the current high uh, minus the previous close uh, or the absolute value of the current low minus the previous close, okay? Um, so that's described in this formula here which you know might look complicated, but it's not very complicated at all. And so, uh, yeah, let's, let's look at that. So uh, the first is you want the true range, which is uh, the maximum of any one of these values. And so if I look at this chart for Ethereum, for instance, and I zoom in on a certain uh, candle here. So this is the uh, five minute time frame from uh, Ethereum USDT here. And so I'm on TradingView. 
And so um, let's look at, um, let's see where it gets more volatile and is less volatile. So you see where, you know, it's relatively flat here and you see these candles are very small. You know, it's not moving around a lot. So you see here I have the ATR added to the chart. And so you can see that the volatility is trending down the longer it stays in this very narrow range. But at, the, at a certain point, right, you see these candles get larger and it moves down really quickly and you see the volatility uh, is picking up. So the ATR is trending upward here. Um, so when it's moving up and it's trending, you see this ATR uh, value is moving up, right? And then you'll see gradually um, these candles get smaller and smaller and you see it gradually uh, flattens out here. And so you see uh, the volatility gets lower and lower as it, as it trades in this range again. And then eventually, you know, it falls down really quickly and, it, and the volatility goes back up. So if, as we discussed in the TTM squeeze video, um, you'll see things go from a period of relatively uh, low volatility, like, like this here, to a period of high volatility where uh, it's moving up and down a lot. And you see these very long uh, candles here. So there's a large difference between uh, the low and the high. So um, let's focus on this uh, peak over here. So let's say uh, 21, uh, 15 at uh, April 5th, uh, 21, 15. So you can see this at the, at the bottom here. So um, you can see uh, the open high, low close of this particular uh, candle here. And so if you look in the top left there, you see uh, the high was 21.48.50 and the low was 21.31.88. Uh, so you can see it's, you know, it's this range here is around uh, 17, uh, $17. Um, and then you can see this range here is uh, the high is 21.47 and the low is 21.35. So it's about 12, right? And so let's see if we can go ahead and calculate what uh, the average true range is um, from scratch. And um, instead of ATR uh, 14, I'm going to use a smaller amount. So I don't want to calculate that many values. So I'll just do five. And you see there's another setting here. So uh, there's different types of moving averages that can be used uh, to make uh, the most recent candle have uh, more weight. So that would be if you're using the exponential moving average. But I'm just going to use the simple moving average. So the uh, five period uh, ATR here. And yeah, so let's go ahead and calculate that and let's see if we can derive one of these values to make sure that we understand it. So um, 2115 here, at 2115, you see the ATR5 is 1347. So um, let's see where that comes from. What that roughly means is that for the five previous candles here, um, the a true range, the average true range is 1347, right? So let, let's. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. So I'm gonna write it down here just to make sure, I'm gonna really draw this out to make sure to understand it. If you already know this stuff, feel free to skip ahead. So uh, what we have is April 5th at uh, 2115. So I'll just make a little uh, table here um, with some columns and then we'll write this out. So there's gonna be at a certain time and these are five minute intervals. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's calculate what the five period ATR is. So uh, 2115, 2110, 2105, 2100, and then 2055 and, and uh, 2050. We need one more, a previous close. So uh, we're looking back. So this would be like our current uh, candle. And so if our current candle was a uh, this one here, you'll see in the uh, top left, I have a high value and we're gonna have a low and we're gonna have a previous close value, okay? Right, and then we'll have, you know, whatever the max is, okay? So the high here, I have 2148.50. The low here I have is 2131.88. And then if I go back one candle to the previous close, it looks like it's uh, 2142, 42, 95, right? So now that we have these values here, we need to calculate the true range of this particular um, timestamp, this particular five minute candle. And so according to our formula here, we want whatever is either the maximum of the high minus the low. So the high minus the low here um, or the high minus the previous close, or the low minus the previous close. So one of these differences 
is going to be uh, the maximum, right? And so which one's the furthest apart? It looks like it's the high minus the low because the high, the high and the previous close here, the high and the previous close here, or, you know, th that's like 550 or so, but the high minus the low here is, what is this, uh, 16, 1662. So uh, the maximum difference is actually 1662 because the high minus the low is a 1662, okay? And so we just need to fill this out for uh, each candle. So we can go back one more, right? So if I go back one more on my chart here, uh, so I'm gonna go back to my Ethereum, and I'm gonna go to uh, 2110. You see our high here is uh, 2151. So I'll write uh, 2151, right? 2151.00. And then the lowest 2142, 2142.46. And the uh, close, the previous close, if I go back one more candle, is 2146.55. So 2146.55, okay? And which one's the greatest uh, difference here? Um, it looks like, again, it's the high minus the low here. And the high minus the low here is uh, what is that, 854. So 854 is the max, right? Um, and I'll do one more just for completion and then I'll fast forward and edit this out. So uh, 2105, if I go across at uh, 2105 here, looks like I got a high of uh, 2147.70. So 2147.70, I got a low of 2135.40. So 2135.40. And then my uh, previous close here is 21.35.21. So 21.35.21, okay? And then the max at this case, you'll see that the previous close is a little bit further from the high than the uh, low. So uh, in this case, uh, this is the max. And then if you subtract those out, you get uh, 12.49, okay? So 12.49, right? And then I'm gonna fill in the rest of these real fast and forward it. And so now that I have these uh, five true range values, these five maximum differences, according to this formula, I just need the average to those. So these, that's just true range number one, two, three, four, five. And all this is is adding, you know, everyone knows how to take an average. This is a summation, right? The summation just means add all these true ranges and then divide by the number of them there are. So you're just adding uh, these five numbers and dividing by five, right? And so if I add all of those together, um, that total comes to 6736, uh, and we're dividing by five. So if I divide uh, 67, 6736 divided by five, we get uh, 13, 1347 is my ATR5, okay? So that's my number, and if I verify that, I can should be able to verify that on my chart. If I go to uh, 2115 and I look there at the bottom panel there and uh, on the left side, it says ATR5 SMA is uh, 1347. So uh, that's your average true range and that's where it com comes from. And that should make intuitive sense, right? Because, you know, it's just the average amount of movement. So um, you see the app for the last five bars, we're moving around about a $13 in range there. And then if you go over here later on, you'll see the ATR goes down to six, right? So we're moving about an average of 13, but then we go over here, it's only an average of six. And then that volatility goes way down. And then you see uh, the volatility will eventually uh, go back up. And then if you go to over here, for instance, the ATR is 16.37, so that's a more volatile period. And so that's how you calculate the ATR by hand. And I think I'm gonna stop it there and get to the actual uh, library to calculate this. I just wanted to do a long drawn out uh, manual calculation to begin uh, to get our juices flowing and understand this. And in the next video, I'll download uh, some newer data and use this Python library uh, to show you how to use a variety of indicators including the ATR, and we'll continue our discussion of Supertrend. So uh, thanks a lot for watching, and stay tuned for the next one, and we'll keep going.